over the years we've tried a lot of different design processes. Frameworks such as British Design Council's Double Diamond, the five-phase process of design thinking. We've made our own versions, which could be broken down into three phases, four phases, and five phases. We've tried them all. They all had elements we liked, but we didn't love them. There was something missing. Then we found Agile, and everything changed. We realized that Agile gave us the opportunity to create projects with the user in mind through its user-centered design processes. User-centered design is a process in which we involve the user in the creative development of a brand, service, or product. By including them in this process, we can ensure that products, services, and brands can be tailored to them, and also in, it improves uptake and reduces risk because we're making it specifically for those users. But wait, what about this quote from Henry Ford? We don't disagree with the people's need, we just disagree with the response that was proposed. We believe the user was saying that they needed a more efficient way to get from A to B. And sure, that could come from a faster horse or a Model T car, but it could also come from other areas such as better public transport. And if they were trying to get to the supermarket, it could come from a new delivery service provided by that supermarket. If we think about the user, not everyone could have ridden a faster horse and not everyone would have wanted to. So, how does user-centered design work? Well, firstly, we need to find the users and get to know them. Once we have found them, we need to know more about them with the idea of getting a rich understanding of who they are, what they love, and what they hope for themselves. We can get this information in a load of different ways. One of the most effective is one-to-one -one interviews. But if we can't get access directly to those people, we can send them surveys. And if we're looking to test a service or a product or an experience, we can observe them while they're testing that service or product. We could also ask them to document their daily lives. Through this documentation, we'll be able to see routines and patterns that might be of use for designing products and services for them. However, research can often be hard to explain and share with other stakeholders. So we create personas that represent that research. They bring context, but not all personas are created equally. According to Lane and Nielsen, there are four types of personas that can be used depending on the amount of research that's taken place. The first persona is the engaging persona. The engaging persona is the most comprehensive. It runs through both the desires and needs of the individual or the user, but it also could cover things like how much they earn, where they go on holiday, if they have pets or children, what car they drive. The second persona is the role-based persona. This is generally within an organization and it's generally a segment of that organization. So this could be a manager or it could even be a new starter to the actual company. We use data to segment that audience within the organization and for them to understand what percentage of the organization this role might play. The third and least refined or least comprehensive is the fictional persona. These are based on the assumptions of the project team and any anonymous data such as uh, analytics. The fourth and final persona is the goals or objectives persona. Within this persona, we're kind of looking at exactly what their needs requirements are to complete a task. So in this context, it might be someone's goal might be to buy a ticket for a show, or it might even be looking for the menu for the restaurant they're about to visit. We're very much breaking down based on data, specific needs, wants, and tasks that they want to achieve through the experience with your brand, product, or service. Once we've created a number of personas in one of the styles, we get a, an overview of how different individuals experience your brand, service, or product. And from this overview, we're able to plan for the future, see patterns in their experiences with you, and see if there are any improvements that we can build on with those users moving forward for the future.